infuriating. And you're going to be able to tell who the racists are. You're going to be able to tell who the racists are. The racists are not going to discuss this with you. You are not going to hear a white person that is racist be like, Oh, so how about that Rayvon, the Trayvon Martin situation? You go to work tomorrow and see how many white people avoid at all costs bringing up that current event. If all your friends are white, all of them. And my white friends know, my white friends and family, white, I got white family. They know where I stand on this. And there are some without discussing it, know where I stand on this. And they understand. Because <laughs> they, they're human and they have common sense. But They want to talk about affirmative action and how horrible that is. That's reverse racism. We know if there was no racism, they wouldn't have found a need to present the, the idea for affirmative action. I was going to do a blog. I was going to do a vlog one day about uh, white people that are driving behind black people that are driving the split speed limit, which can be frustrating, especially if you're in a hurry to get somewhere and everybody's speeding. You got somebody in front of you want to go to speed limit, get out of the fast lane, and then you can't even get around sometimes. That's infuriating. But from a double standard perspective, I always said white people, if you driving about behind a black person that's going too slow for your taste. You are not allowed to get, get angry and frustrated at that black person. You either take your time or wait till you find an opportunity to go around. You are not allowed. Why? Because a mere traffic stop could become deadly for us. And that vlog was inspired by a situation where there was a young lady, if some of you in my area probably may remember it, because it was, I was, a, it, was a, it was five, eight years or more ago. But this young lady and her boyfriend, who was big, you know, football player, were driving. They got pulled over for a traffic stop. These, these police, they had this, the guy get out of the car and he was on, on his knees with his hands up. This is how the bullet got, bullet got him. They assassinated him right there. I'm sure they claimed some struggle or something. He was on the ground with his hands up in a don't shoot me type way. Killed him. She goes to pick up her cell phone because what is she going to do? All she got is cops right there. She knows they're going to protect each other. Zimmerman. She knows they're going to protect each other. So she picks up her cell phone. They claim they thought it was a gun. They shoot her too. This happens all the time, white people, to us. It doesn't make the news. Black people are attacked by policemen, by law enforcement, all the time, and it, they are protected from it. A lot of white people love to say, well, you always, you whatever, whatever, and the first thing you do, you're always talking about the you know, the how bad the police are, but if you get in trouble, the first thing you're going to do is call the police. That's what you think, white people. We will avoid calling the police at all costs. Because you know what can happen depending on the situation? If we call the police in a situation for someone else uh, threatening us in any way, we, we realize that we could be the ones end up going to jail if when and especially when initiated by them calling the popo is not the first thing that we look to do we avoid that we use that as the last resource actually this booze got me through this without crying i thought i was going to be crying <laughs> 
thought I was going to be crying. As ridiculous as you guys are, but. And the report, but the entire Republican Party, the GOP, has just become just that. They're just represent. They're the new clan. They are. Say what you want. You know, you paint the president as this person that wants to do harm to the country. Really? You think he has a family that he doesn't love? That he would, just humanly, just a com your basic common sense. He has a wife and two beautiful daughters. He wants the best for them. And that's another thing with the GOP. They will, they will throw everybody under the bus. They'll throw their mother, wife, and children under the bus for a couple of more dollars in their own pockets. It's at all costs. This mentality is what will destroy the country. Nobody's trying to get you back and make slaves out of you. People want peace, that's all. And the more you lash out, because most of them are childish and uneducated. And if you combine those two things, those are the people that are prime targets for like, if you notice, for Christianity or religion, any, any religion. Like they'll go and get a bunch of uneducated people, con them real quick because they're easy to be suckered into. Or they can read one thing in a pamphlet or a book and be like, oh, I'm, I'm there. Oh, now this is their fight. And they haven't even used the logic and say, wait, that doesn't make sense. What do you... Okay, this part sounds good, but this part doesn't make sense. They just go with everything. That's why you have like cults and stuff that are like having sex with their, with their, ba their children as babies. They think that's beautiful. And um, God, there's so much. There's so much to talk about on the subject of public idiocy and ignorance. It's so heavy, it's so heavy right now. I have nephews. As soon as I saw the picture of that little boy in his little Hollister shirt, I'm like, oh, he looks just like one of my nephews. I mean, if, even if I was white and Republican, and even raise racist. At a certain point, I would be like, "Wow, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna." If I had any common sense, I, I'm going to have to reevaluate, you know, how life is lived, and and how humans. I'm just going to have to rethink this whole lifestyle and way of thinking and political outlook. And that's only those with common sense. You've seen Republican rallies. How many do you really think have common sense? Or are unselfish? I can say my president is unselfish. And they like to say, the, the bad things they say about him are like awesome. Like, <laughs> like oh, he's elitist. I, I want the president of the United States, the leader of the free world, I kind of want him to be, on, I don't want him to be good or but. I want him to be elite. That's not a bad, <laughs> you know, you thinking you must be thinking pretentious and nose in there and all that stuff better than everybody else oh that's what you are uh the guy's charismatic i'll give him that why is that a bad thing charisma is awesome entertaining constructive well you know he's just he'll charm he could charm you right into Charming, why is charming synonymous with lying? You know, like you guys talk about these players, you know, they got all these women, womanizers, you call them charming. That's not charming. He's not charming. Gentlemen that respect women and, and are complimentary uh, and 
men respect them as well as women. They're a man's man. They're a woman's man. People love them. Even the people that want to hate them have to respect their integrity. They're charming. Well, they're charming because they mean it. Dumb ass. Ignorance and it really is selfish. And you don't even realize it. And then you wonder why you continue to attract the like-minded people in your life. Because you embrace bullshit. Stop embracing bullshit. And stop just following anybody because of anything they say. Or anything you read. Use your own... Do your own research, but also use your common sense. Try to make an effort to be balanced. This is one current event right here that I'm I'm so on one. I'm on one right now. I'm on one, y'all. I'm sorry, white family. I'm I'm gonna be on one for a minute. I'm going to be on my phone. You know, like Adele, Adele said, Adele may had a post once that she was like, she, she addressed it to like, I guess, religious people and asked, how would you live your life if there was no book to live it by? If there were no Bible, because there are so many conflicting things in the Bible. Like you could grab whatever's convenient for your bullshit and throw it out there as a defense for, for the way you live in. So... But there's a lot of good, there are a lot of good things, good positive things. So her question was, how would you live your life if there were no book to follow? Follow. The Bible is a good book. It should be, should be revered by all. But it was written by man. And it is flawed in all its lessons. And if you didn't have instructions, how would you live your life? Would you have balance and common sense enough to, to uh, to execute some form of, of humanity? Would you be that person? Or would you join the masses into a sea of bullshit? Just hop on that wagon. Hop on that bandwagon. I said it when I first heard about it that 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 uh, Trayvon is our modern day Emmett Till, and he really is. And for the record, I was the first one that I know of to say that <laughs> that Trayvon is our modern day Emmett Till, because I'm gonna think about him for I believe for years to come. He will be on my mind. He's on my mind daily right now. But I, I I know that he will be on my mind for years to come. And I I wonder, and there was somebody who immediately wrote an article still in that idea, but they did at least tag me in it to recognize me as a person from whom they heard that. But you'll probably hear it a lot more. But just know I was the first one to say that Trayvon is our modern day Emmett Till. The only difference is Emmett Till actually whistled. You want to blow that up and make some shit out of that? Okay, fine. He whistled oh, off with his head. But this guy was armed with <laughs> a pack of Skittles and iced tea. And for those for you of you who have not survived, your life your your life has your loss of life has not been meaningless because it's led up to this moment. And for those of you who are, of you who are unju who unjustly raped of your freedom, I love you, Trayvon. And when I say I love you, Trayvon, I'm saying I love you to our fathers, uncles, brothers nephews, sons, and husbands, because they're all Trayvon Martin. <laughs>